This is part one of a two-parter that we got today. Let's just check it out. This one is called the 433 Asphyxia THP2 Tactic. Quite a, quite a mouthful. Um, it is from a guy named SK4. He has basically created two separate tactics. One is an offensive tactic. One seems to be more on the defensive side of things. I don't really understand because the 3412 is supposedly a more offensive side. We'll take a look at that next time. So I'm assuming this is more of a defensive tactic, if not a defensive tactic, at least more defensive than the offensive one that we'll look at next time. However, the Steam Workshop, it is all in French. Uh, the 3412 that he created, that again, we'll take a look at it another time, is basically pointing you to this 433. Uh, so in, in that description in the Steam Workshop, it says, Here is the 433 Asphyxia THP2 subtly combining two contradictory strategies in the same tactic, Asphyxia. I believe he created an Asphyxia tactic before, uh, but same tactic of the opponent in the recovery while taking advantage of its depth during phases of possession. Uh, again, this is Google Translate, so I apologize greatly. This tactic will deprive a number of opponents of oxygen, and if despite all this will not be completely enough for the hardheads, its offensive version in 3421 will put an end in a cruel way worthy of the worst horror movies to the adversary who will dare to resist you. Yeah, Google Translate, absolutely winners on these. However, it looks like the 3421 is the more offensive one, so we'll take a look at this right now and then get to that in a couple of days. But right now, Sweeper Keeper in support, Wing Back in attack on the left, a Full Back in support on the right, two Ball Playing Defenders in defend, a Deep Line Playmaker in defend, an Advanced Playmaker in support, a CM in attack, Inside Forward on the left in attack, Winger in attack on the right, and an Advanced Forward up front in attack. Again, positive mentality, in possession, fairly wide attacking with, approach play is pass to space, overlap on the left and right, play out of defense, Passing directness is shorter. Tempo is slightly lower. Uh, final third, lower crosses, dribble less. In transition, counter press, counter, distribute to the playmaker. Interesting, that's a new one for us. And out of possession, high press line of engagement, much higher defensive line. Trigger press much more often, prevent short goalkeeper distribution, and drop off more. Now, looking at how this tactic did for our teams, uh, unfortunately, not all that well. Again, this is just a sim. I have not done a single thing. I've let the, the assistant coaches and managers and all that besides me do all of the work. And as you can see, Tottenham in sixth, 65, uh, is that, 64 points, average-ish, a little higher than average maybe, uh, but in Europa spots, Newcastle and Wolves just staving off relegation, 44, 43. I mean, by a couple of points still, but, you know, 16th and 17th apiece, not all that fantastic. Schedule-wise, I mean, Tottenham not starting off well in August kind of kicking on in September and October with just two losses there. Moving on in Champions League, it looks like EFL Cup, EFL Cup fourth round. Uh, you continue on to the quarters, the semis, the FA Cup fourth round. I mean, you're doing, the second half of the season looks fantastic. You do get to the EFL Cup final and win against Bradford, nil one. Uh, FA Cup, you continue on Champions League round of 16. There you go. FA Cup quarterfinals, nil two against Middlesbrough of all clubs. Uh, but Atletico Madrid, you're finally dropping out in Champions League quarterfinals. 3-1 at home you win, but lose 2-5 in Spain. And yeah, I mean, it looks like a pretty good second half, except for, you know, the second half of April and May, just not all that great. Newcastle schedule, I mean, Newcastle and Wolves are not going to be all that great. You just drop out to Wolves 1-4 in the EFL Cup second round fairly immediately. You it's, uh, FA Cup, you got a few wins, but lose out in the fourth round to Arsenal. And look at all that red. I mean, March and April definitely would have fired me in a heartbeat, if not before. Wolves, again, I mean, beating Newcastle 4-1 to nicely in the FA Cup second round, but an awful first half of the season. Out in December, nil 4 against West Ham in the FA Cup fourth round. Out in the FA Cup third round, Crystal Palace. Uh, I mean, you got some wins, but again, March, April, May, not good at all. Tottenham transfers Ugarte from Sporting, 52 million. Kiernan Drewsbury Hall from Leicester, 26 and a half. Tony Weston, we see. Uh, Dominguez, we've seen. But I mean, some nice names here. I haven't seen Drewsbury Hall before, so that's a good one. Newcastle, we've seen a lot of these names before. Theo, Kai, uh, Kai Kennedy, Victor Nelson, Ruben Loftus-Cheek. 
on loan, not spending a whole lot this time around. And then Jamel LaSalle goes out for 30.4 to Celta Vigo. I mean, you're getting a little money back. Rafael for 1 million, Samu for Wolves, Miguel Veloso, we've seen Cunha, we already know. But they are bringing some players in that we haven't seen before. Data hub for all three teams, probably not going to look all that great. Uh, Tottenham, okay defensively, good in attack. You can see a lot of some numbers that are just over Premier League average dribbling. Of course, we know it's not going to be there. Uh, team defending, actually not too bad. I guess okay-ish. Newcastle, weak defensively, generally okay in attack. And as you can see, they've got a couple you know, shots per game. Uh, and the non-penalty expected goals, not too bad. Uh, everything else kind of on par or below dribbling, very bad for this tactic. But you're not. A, this isn't a dribbling tactic. Team defending, yeah. I mean, all everything except for tackles attempted per game are below average. Not the greatest. Wolves, plenty of problems defensively. Look at that. I mean, some you've got on average, uh, but fouls per game, which is not. I mean, fouls made per game low, which is nice, but. Uh, interceptions, blocks, everything is just, uh, I mean, yeah. And then attack, nothing really too big. Uh, Premier League average or better, but still not by far. Squad-wise for all three teams, pause where you want to see your players. Newcastle. And then Wolves. Actually, Wolves having a fair amount of sevens. Definitely not expecting too much from these three teams with team stats in the Premier League. Most goals, Tottenham and Wolves are in there, 75 and 64 apiece. Fewer shots, I mean, actually, Wolves being up there is pretty impressive compared to, you know, finishing just outside of the relegation zone. Fewer shots against, though, Tottenham possession. Uh, nobody for most dribbles made. Fewest conceded Tottenham's in there. Same with most shutouts. Uh, I mean, most tackles won. I'm not going to see any of these other teams. So, New actually, there you go. Most shots for Newcastle, Tottenham, and Wolves. They just didn't put it on the net very well. Most points per game, though, Tottenham, as you'd expect. Player overviews is where I'm going to be interested in. 27 goals for Harry Kane, 17 for Isaac. Most assists, Triori, Sarabia, Kulusevski in there. 15 for Triori. That's a fantastic result. Uh, most player of the match awards, Kulusevski and Kane. Uh, Ait Nori's in there as well with six. Best passing completion, Dyer's in there. Dribbles made, Triori. Uh, nobody. No, uh, Hugo Lloris is in there for most shutouts. Tackles one, Nunes with 90. So, I mean, he's getting some kind of the defensive work. Trippier up there with most key passes, as in Sarabi, as we usually expect. Most shots, Isaac with 113. Holland with 179. Harry Kane with 91. That's not too bad, actually. Player stats-wise, for all competitions, Harry Kane with 45 goals. Absolutely amazing. 729 highest average rating, 15 assists for Kulusevski. And Kane with 11 player of the match awards. Isaac with 23 goals and 708 highest average rating. Trippier and Target with seven assists apiece. Isaac with four player of the match awards. But again, 16th place. Wow. And then Wolves, Jimenez with 21 goals and 711 highest average rating. Triari with 15 assists. And Aitnori with six player of the match awards. Overall, I mean, definitely this did not work whatsoever for this sim. You can clearly do a little bit better managing things yourself. You know, the tactics... Um, the in-game and everything associated with it, the players coming in, all the transfers. But, I mean, still, 64 points. You got to get to 68 or 75, somewhere in there to do some kind of good with this. But, I mean, Newcastle and Wolves, 43-44. I mean, I, I will say 43, one point, you know, one game win, you get to 14th. So, it this area is really kind of packed. So... It doesn't really, I guess it really doesn't say too much that they're in 16th and 17th. You know, a couple more wins that you could easily pick up, you know, the one, two losses that you've got, you can probably turn them into three, two wins. Uh, and that will drive you up the table pretty far, but still, you're not going to get a lot higher, uh, I would imagine. You know, 43 to 68 to 75 is kind of hard to imagine. Uh, but who knows? You can do many different things on your own and have varying results. But that is it for me, 7FM for the Football Manager blog channel saying thank you as always for watching. And again, next time we are going to cover that 3421 more offensive and see what happens with it. But that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and enjoy.